Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in a shell Turtle power They're the ultimate awesome fighting team These are some funny guys like you They're Teenage Mutant Ninjas And they're green Racism ba ba da ba 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 Something something I don't know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Welcome back to another radical video. In today's video, we're going to be reading stories about the infamous, the classic, the very awesome Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The worldwide known characters, the nationally acclaimed characters. The series is awesome, it's awesome, it's classic. And no, I'm not talking about the Michael Bay version. <laughs> Don't be silly guys, um, no, I'm talking about the classic Ninja Turtles, the one that everyone knows and loves, the originals, all these new Ninja Turtles are terrible, <laughs> awful, I'm not talking about the new, beta version of the Ninja Turtles, I'm talking about the Alpha, the Sigma Ninja Turtles, back from my day when I was alive. So we're going to be reading some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan fictions, don't ask me why, and uh, yeah, I've just picked out a random one here. Uh, this story is called Please Speak Mikey by Hoblet Girl. Uh, so this is, I guess this is about the character Michelangelo. Look at the cover right here. Look how sad Michelangelo looks. Look at, look at his poor cute face. Oh, Michelangelo. I feel so bad for Mikey. Mikey's my favourite because Mike, Mike is uh, funny and hilarious. He's the funny, he's the comedic guy of the group. And I love him. He's my favourite Ninja Turtle. I will, I will die for Michelangelo. So let's read this fanfiction about him. I have no idea what it's about. I've just picked it out at random. So let's just go. Chapter 1. Let's hope this is a fucking good one. <laughs> I literally have no idea. In the clear, darkened blue night, with the moon shining, while the stars illuminated across the quiet city of New York, the citizens rested from a long day of work in their comfy homes. But for our favourite mutant turtles, it was like any other ordinary night. For our favourite, lovable Ninja Turtles, it's just an ordinary night of fighting crime, eating pizza, being quirky and relatable, and awesome and skateboarding and shit. Like this video if you're a skater dude like the Ninja Turtles. The brothers bounced and sprinted from roof to roof, showing off their skills and reflexes, and stayed hidden in the corners, protected by the shadows engulfing their bodies. With sharp eyes, they scanned the scene for their most frequent em enemy. The Purple Dragons. That's the most frequent en enemy? The Purple Dragons? Who the fuck are they? Is it not the Foot Clan? It's the Foot Clan? The those are the bad guys? And I missed a big bi bad giant Shredder. That's the, that's the bad guy. Who the fuck are the Purple Dragons? But this fanfiction is just making shit up. It's ruining my fucking childhood right here. I, I seen this shit. This isn't fucking... I don't remember this from my childhood TV show. Donnie. Have you located them yet? This is the fourth alley we've searched and still no sign of them, said Leo, as he leaped into the air onto the next building. Yes, I got the signal. Just two more blocks up ahead, said the third youngest, just as he heard the second oldest smacking his fists together in anticipation. Finally some action, snarled Raff, pushing more energy into his leg muscles, catching up with his older brother. Oh, finally, hell yeah! I get to beat people up! I finally get to fucking kill people and beat the shit out of them. Ralph is a fucking psychopath. Are you seeing this shit? Ralph, I gotta say, like the most psychopathic member of the Ninja Turtles. I think he, Ralph should be locked up immediately and, you know, he needs psychiatric help. Mikey smirked watching his brothers in competition. With his raw talent and being the fastest out of the brothers, he zoomed past Donnie and lifted his hands onto their shells, jumping high above and landing on the next building gracefully. Ha! I win, he announced cheerfully. Raphael scoff. We weren't racing, dumbass. We were on a mission, remember? Pay attention. You fucking idiot. We're not racing. This is not a game, this is real life. We're on a super secret mission and we're, uh, we're gonna go to these purple dragon guys and we're gonna beat the shit out of them. This is a secret mission, this is not a game. My, Mike, I don't know why we're bringing you along on these missions, I'll tell you what. I don't... Anyone else think that Mike is a bit of a distraction? Am I the only one here? Am I the only one who thinks Mike isn't taken seriously enough? Yeah, I, th I think we should stop bringing this Mike character. He missed the flicker of hurt on Mikey's face as he stood next to Leo, who crouched down on his knee. Looking in the darkness of the alleyway, as if right on cue, a white van drove h half into the shadows under a street lamp. Five foot ninjas emerged from the back, 
standing guard as two bulky men with purple dragon ca tattoos came out, came around from the front. There's the Foot Clan, there's the classic guys that I know. The Foot Fetish Clan. Has anyone ever made that joke before? Probably. See, that's what the Foot Clan does. All they do is fucking sneak around and sneak into people's homes and take pictures of people's feet. And that's and that's why the Ninja Turtles are here. They're, they're gonna stop them. They're gonna stop the Purple Dragons. The Purple Dragons, that's their deviant, that's their deviant art name. <laughs> purple Dragons. With stealth and silence, the Turtles listened as the men began s discussing their scheme. They're discussing their scheme. They're, like, they're, they're gathering around like, okay guys, we're going that building right there and uh, we're gonna sneak into apartment two and we're gonna you know just pick the lock quietly going tiptoe around you know go into the bedroom very very quietly there's a there's a woman in there called abby and we just need to just like take out the take out your phone camera get get real nice and in there get real nice and in on those feet and just take take a quick snap all right just a quick snap and we're all bouncing out there, right? Make sure you've got your phone on silent so that it doesn't make a big giant noise. All right, guys, just, 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 listen, listen, listen. I know, I, know you, I know you think it's weird. Like, why are we doing this? You know, Shredder didn't tell us to do this, but listen, Shredder told me that we need to go in there and take a picture of Abby's feet, all right? Listen, it's very important that we do this, guys. This is a very important mission, all right? All right, let's do this. Let's go. What are they saying? Asked Mikey, leaning towards Donny. Shh, I can't hear if you're speaking, Mikey. Retorted Don, concentrating. Shut the fuck up, Mike! I'm trying to listen to their scheme. I'm trying to listen to their plan. It sounds very interesting. Uh, apartment 12? Abby, you say? Hmm. Sneaking through the back. Okay, guys, I think we know. I think I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna go into a. We're going go into apartment 12 before they get in there. And uh, there's a woman in there called Abby. And she's got some really nice feet. Uh, she, uh, apparently, she's got some really nice feet. I don't know. I'm, I, I think that's what they're talking about. She's got some really nice feet. I don't know. These guys, these evil guys, we gotta take a picture of her feet. And get her out of there before, like, they come in, you know, you know, guys, we gotta do it before them. So, yeah, so, you know, guys, Mikey moved forward, accidentally creating noise, which luckily didn't alert the enemies, but granted glares from his brothers. Mikey, stop moving and keep quiet, yelped Leo, his voice rising slightly due to his baby brother's liability and stillness. Shell for brains, shut up, you're gonna ruin everything again. Raph took a few breaths to calm his temper. He's a ninja for crying out loud. Why can't he act like one? The red-clad turtle fought as he watched the youngest squirm again. Sorry guys, didn't mean to. You know how I am. Mikey apologised, the feeling in his chest slightly burning from his brother's words. Enough guys, look, shushed Leo, who stood up, raising his katanas as the men started to take action. Okay guys, here's the plan. As Leo refreshed his motive, Mikey stood up, only to find out that his foot had fallen asleep and promptly lost his balance. He cried out as he fell off the side of the building, falling on top of a dumpster. He moaned faintly and rubbed his head. Ow, that hurt, he said, noticing the purple dragons had discovered him. It's them, the freaks, footbots, attack! One of the men commanded as the foot ninjas charged towards Mikey. Leo sighed. Plan failed, guys. Let's kick some bots. They sprung downwards, colliding with the enemies. Mikey jumped out the way just in time, as Raph came crashing down on top of a robot, crushing his head. Oh yeah, that's how it's done, he shouted, swinging his nun nunchakus and wh whacking two more into the wall. The turtles then saw movement in the shadows, and looked up to see more foot soldiers spreading around them. Guys, the main priority is the van, exclaimed Leo, slashing his swords nicely through the torso of a nearby bot, and defeated more ninjas as he ran towards the men. Booyakasha! Mikey yelled, kicking and swiping the robots. You guys think you're so tough, but you can't win! Not watching his surroundings, Raphael ducked his head, almost chuffed by the nunchakus. Mikey! Focus! screamed Raph, as the youngest smiled sheepishly. Sorry Raph, my bad. Raph and Leo knocked out the purple dragons and continued to wipe out the footbots when they saw their youngest brother, Mikey, laughing as he swung his kusa kusa rigama. Take this and that! He then grabbed a bot and swung him towards the van, not realising Donny had been inside the van since the battle started. The bow staff wielding turtle had discovered three containers of mutagen within the truck and was investigating further. Mutagen? Well, this obviously isn't good. What were the footbots trying to do with a trying to make a fucking nuke? Was Shredder gonna nuke everything? Shredder were gonna nuke the Ninja Turtles? He muttered sarcastically before plunging forward after being struck behind by an unconscious ninja. Donny narrowly missed the green goo but lost his footing and bashed his head harshly on a sharp corner. 
Oh, Jesus. Donny's fucking smashed, smacked his head fucking very hard against a sharp corner and is fucking killed. He's cracked his head open. Well done, Michelangelo. You just killed Donatello. R.I.P. Donatello. You are dead. He yelped, closing his eyes, taking a few breathers from the pain. He winced at the wetness, seeing a small blotch of blood on his hand. He then gasped as another one was thrown inside by Mikey. Mikey, stopped throwing them in here. Donny flinched from the sudden surge of dizziness. The youngest made his way towards the van, the blue eye widening at his injured brother. Sorry Donny, I... He was shoved aside by Raph, who stepped on the box, getting to his brother. Swaying on his feet, he leaned against his older brother, slowly getting off the vehicle. Leo rushed forward, switching to mother hen mode. What happened? he asked, placing his hands on each side of Donny's face. Mikey stepped backwards as Raph faced him with an icy glare. Why don't you ask screw up over here? Mikey turned to Leo, his oldest brother. Except he wasn't staring at him. His heart squeezed tightly, noticing Leo wasn't saying anything to him, in fact. It felt like he was ignoring him. We don't have time for this, Raph. We need to get that mutagen before any more reinforcement come. Leo settled Donny down next to the wall. Yeah, Donny, get the fuck out of here, man. We've got a mission to do. You're fucking distracting me, man. What, are you bleeding from your head? That, bro, we've got a mission. Let's get back to work, boys. Mikey, knowing he was to blame, slowly made his way towards Donny. All of a sudden, he caught one of the purple dragons, reaching the driver's side of the van. No! Mikey charged forward, startling the man, who grabbed a pipe, swinging it furiously at the orange masked turtle. Mikey ducked, thrusting his arm up, aiming for the chin. The teen smiled in triumph, not realising he had shifted the pipe, slamming it against the left of his... plastron? Mikey hollered from the blow, his ribs thankfully bruised and not broken. The purple dragon saw his chance and rushed to finish the delivery for his boss. Leo and Raph heard Mikey when the van shuddered, the wheels begin to, beginning to move. Both brothers managed to escape in time, but with only one mutagen in Raph's hand. The red brother scowled while Leo narrowed his eyes, gritting his teeth. Half of their mission failed. They saw Mikey staggering towards them. Leo reached his brother calmly, asking what happened. Mikey told them what had encountered with the man, which only angered Raphael further. Mikey, if you hadn't screamed, we would have gotten all the mutagen, but you couldn't keep your mouth shut for one second. Damn it! If you weren't such a crybaby, if you weren't such a bitch, if you weren't screaming like a girl, then this would never have happened. Mikey crouched down from his brother's wrath, and his eyes started to water. They did not realise he was harmed. I was only trying to help. Raph! Language! Are you tr are you hurt, Mikey? Leo placed a gentle hold on his shoulder. The, the throbbing of his ribs were causing difficulty in his breathing, but he deserved this. He shook his head. Leo nodded, releasing the hold on his younger brother, and made his way towards Donny, who observed the scene. Unfortunately, he didn't witness the incident. Due to his head injury, head, 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 I think I've got a head injury. Due to his head injury, but obviously Mikey was lying with his hand hovering over his side. Let's go home and tell Splinter, grabbing hold of Donny's left arm over his shoulder. Leo helped him towards the sewer hole. Mikey waited until the other three went first, but not before a harsh slap by Raph. His cold, emerald eyes were enough to make Mikey shudder as he disappeared down the steps. Whoa, Raphael slapping Mike? No fucking way! Raph is the, is the classic Raphael slap. <laughs> uh, the, get it? Raphael slaps Michelangelo. It's like, you know, it's in reference to that slap event incident that happened. The incident, you know, the ter the horrific incident that happened the other day. The horrific, violent, gruesome incident that happened to comedian Chris Rock yet fucking, I don't even know how many days ago, like a month, years, it happened years ago. Mikey disregarded the pain, knowing it wasn't important. He climbed down the steps, luckily, without any difficulty, walking behind his older brother with his head down knowing he was in for a lecture. The atmosphere in the lair was tense. Donny was in his lab with Splinter and Leo, meaning that Mikey was stuck in the living room with Raph. He couldn't remember the last time the air was so suffocating. His breath was a little ragged, his ribs are now burning. Since their return, Leo and Raph had not said anything to Mikey, and their father, sensing the anger and guilt-ridden surrounding his three children, decided not to ask any questions. Mikey wanted to apologise that it was his fault Donny was hurt, but would sorry be enough this time? He knew he could be quite distracted, and had a hard time staying in one place, which is ironic considering how glued he was to the couch right now. Mikey was ready to speak when the door opened, and Leo emerged. Raph sat straight up, and asked how Donny was. He will be alright, just need a few days rest. Leo then looked at Mikey since they arrived back, crossing his arms, staring down at his baby brother. Mikey. The leader rubbed his face in frustration as Mikey fiddled with his fingers. Why did you not follow my rules? We could have easily stopped if you had just pay attention. 
Leo kept his voice serene, although the frequent disappointment due to his youngest brother was creeping into his shell. Because he can't do anything right, that's why. He's a screw-up. Fuck, we may as well ditch this fucking guy. Why, why, why do we even let him stick around, man? Mike, you're gonna get fired. You're gonna have to search for a different job. Mike's gonna be searching for employment. Fucking, he's gonna have to work at, uh... Uh, the pizza shop, ha, get it? Because they like pizza. He's going to have to work as a pizza delivery person. Better not eat all the pizza, haha, <laughs> because Mike eats the pizza and he's uh, funny. Have you seen that uh, in Injustice video where it's like all the superhero characters love Mikey and it's the thumbnails like of a smiling Superman saying, <laughs> skipped training again. And then Mike's saying, I was hungry. <laughs> That's hilarious, Mike. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. I'm gonna beat the fucking shit out of you now. Mikey stared up at him, his eyes swelling up as his brother, his hero, believed he was not good enough. He turned to Leo, pleading, because it wasn't true. Right? Mikey, you have to listen, but you can't even seem to do that. You're constantly chatting like you're speaking to a friend, and Donnie was hurt because of you. Curling into his shell would be a nice idea right now. He never meant to do harm to his brothers. He loved them so much. Jesus, what is, what is this fucking fan? Is this just straight up fucking fucking shitting on Mike. This whole fan fiction is just dedicated to hating on Mike. Fuck Michelangelo. All my homies hate Michelangelo. The worst Ninja Turtle. I didn't mean it. Honest. I didn't even know Donnie was in there. Mikey apologised. Now standing near Leo as he spoke. Why? That doesn't surprise me. Drawled Raph, sneering at his brother. A ninja is supposed to have stealth, and is supposed to understand the situation they are in. But you obviously can't. Raph's temper was overflowing. He had had enough of Mikey's idiotic games. You have to say something, don't you? That mouth of yours can't be quiet for one second. It drives me crazy! Just show up, Mikey! Every time you speak, disaster happens! I'm sick of hearing your voice! It would be better for all of us if you just didn't speak at all! It's alright, Michelangelo. Don't listen to the haters. They're just jealous. They're just jealous that they can't fuck up as bad as you. <laughs> the tension in the air was so thick you could cut it with a knife. Raph's shoulders were hunched, his deep breathing trying to gain control of his emotions. Leo struggled on what to say, for a part of him believes that Raph is right. Mikey needed to tone it down, or he could put them all in danger. But when he faced his tear-stricken baby brother, his horrid thoughts vanished. Mikey! He called out his name again, as Mikey ran towards his room. Forget it, Leo. Let him sulk like the little baby he is. The second oldest went towards the lab, to check on his other younger brother. Leo followed Raph, for he couldn't do much to help Mikey, except leave him be. The baby of the family sobbed into his pillow, tears thickening, his voice choked, releasing a few coughs filled with mucus. He couldn't stop the tears flowing down his freckled face. The painful words of his brother lingered deeply in his mind, reminding him how useless and effective he could be. You're constantly chatting. Donnie was hurt because of you. He screws up on everything. It would be better for all of us if you didn't speak at all. The tears stopped, sticking to his face as he stared at the wall opposite. The baby blue eyes so bright, now taken over by a tremendous sadness. He chucked the covers over his head, clutching the well-worn teddy bear from his childhood. His ribs were tender, and would twinge whenever he shifted on the bed. But he didn't care. This was his punishment. They're both right. Donnie has a head wound because I can't do anything right. I'm not worthy to be a ninja. Not speaking would be a dream come true for my family. Besides, it'll protect them. Yeah, it'd be great if I didn't say a word. And that's where that chapter ends. I'm gonna uh, select a different fanfiction. That one was alright. You can check that one out. So we'll be moving on to a more romantic fanfiction. More of a romantic, uh, close, you know, getting close to the Ninja Turtles. Really understanding them and getting deep and passionate with them. So this one is called The Love Between Us by Madison Smith. So this is a love story. Pleasant, nice love story. We're going to be falling in love with one of the Ninja Turtles. So, hey guys. If you've always wanted to uh, have sex, have vigorous, painful sex with one of the Ninja Turtles, you're in for a treat. <laughs> and we're going to be starting with an author's note here. Author speaking. Update 2020. Please excuse this book for any mixed up storyline moments, confusing grammar or vocabulary, etc. I was a lot younger when I wrote this, and my writing skills were terrible. So you know, I guess the person who wrote this is aware at least, so they were aware. So they, they know. I, I'm allowed to make fun of it now. <laughs> Here it is. My Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan fiction. I will update quite a bit since it's summer. Here's a little bit about the main character. Name. Kyrie Jackson. Age, 17. Hair, brown. Eyes, bright green. The only thing I came up with is Kyrie, Hector, and some other smaller characters and the storyline. All other ca settings slash characters, Turtles, Splinter, Shredder, Karai, etc. 
belong to the creators of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Smiley face, so don't sue me, please. You can't sue me, I put a smiley face in the fucking thing. Some questions that I'm going to answer for you right now. Rated PG-13. Cussing? <laughs> yeah! This cussing, this swearing in this. Some violent slash more grown up type scenes sometimes. So guys, if you're a child and you're a big, you love TMNT, you love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You've got the, all the toys, you've got the TMNT bed. This is not for you, all right? This is for, this is for grown ups. This is for men, this is for boys. This is not for boys, this is for men. It's not for girls, for men. For us dudes out here. We're grown ups. This is for us, not for you, you little baby child. Get out of here. Don't forget to comment, vote, and follow. Oh, and enjoy the story. Smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. And uh, yeah, that's the author's note. So let's let's get into the actual story. Chapter one, the turtles. Below me, my phone continued to fall until it hit the ground. It shattered into five pieces. Stepping back from the edge of the rooftop, I put my hands to my head and pulled on my hair. Ugh! I screamed, another burst of anger. I'm going to tell you now that I have anger issues. Some people just say that to be joking, but I mean it. Anger always gets to me before any of other emotion. I don't know why. You might think I'm joking when I say this, but I've got anger issues. I've got I've kind of got anger issues, and that's not a joke. This is real. If you piss me off, I'm actually gonna fucking hurt you. I will break your legs. Kyrie, my father, my father, my my father, my father yelled from inside our apartment. Get down here and make me some food. Trying to cool down, I unclenched my fists and stomped down the fire escape to the top floor of the apartment building. Why did I even stay with him? Where did you go? Hector, I didn't call my father dad, demanded. I'd been waiting for hours. Actually, more like five minutes. I muttered. My breath was sudden take a taken away from me when Hector slammed me up against the window. Coughing, I tried to pry his strong arm off my neck. It was no use. Don't backtalk me, Kyrie, Hector hissed. Narrowing my eyes, I could only blink in defeat. When he released me, I fell to the floor and held my throat in pain. Looking, looking up at Hector, he smirked at me, then grabbed his car keys off the counter. I'll just go get my own food, lazy ass slut. When he slammed the door, I quickly scrambled back to the window to watch his car pull away. As soon as the car did, I ran into my bedroom, pulling out a suitcase. I grabbed all my clothes, photos of family and valuables. Walking into the kitchen, I grabbed the water and my apartment key. Leaving my apartment key on the counter, I put on my Cameo sweatshirt. Cameo? Like the website Cameo? They sell, they sell shirts now? Also, why do these stories like about fucking, about like, you know, lighthearted topics like Dream and fucking uh, Ninja Turtles? Why do they have to fucking have abusive fathers in them all the time? Like, I've read fucking two stories with like abusive fathers. First we had Jay Schlatt, now we have Hector. What the fuck is this? Fuck you, Hector. I ducked out onto the fire escape and dragged my suitcase with me. Sliding down the ladder, I landed on the ground with a slight oomph and a glare up at the apartment. Shaking my head, I picked up my suitcase and started off down the alleyway. I kicked a rock in front of me for a little bit until headlights blinded me. Covering my eyes, I tried to make out who it was. An evil-like laugh made my eyes widen. I knew they were going to try and leave. That would break my heart. Why would you even try to do that? Hector slammed me up against the brick wall of a building. Alright, so that's he that was Hector in the car. Hector, what f I thought you were going to get a pizza, man. What are you doing? Figures dressed in all black jumped off the roof behind Hector, and his ga gaze became fearful when a deep voice said, You fail at your work. Bradford. Hector turned and slammed me against the wall again. I was just trying to deal with this slut here. The Shredder wants her. A humongous, tan dog that stood like a human gazed at me with a gleam of hunger in his eyes. No, no. Hector actually sounded scared. I wanted to laugh, but I held it in. She's mine. We made that deal. So what, Hector works for the fu This random fucking I kicked the wire to, m to the microphone by accident and it just turned off. <laughs> I don't I like I, I lightly touched the fucking microphone wire and then it just fucking shut the whole thing down. Bradford made a signal to the figures dressed in black and they suddenly charged at both Hector and I. I yelped with pain when one of the soldiers slammed me against the wall hard and I held a sword up to my neck. A freaking sword. Get her. Bradford commanded. I started to bolt away, but a throwing star hit my shoulder. Grabbing my shoulder, I screamed in pain. Drawing back my hand, I suddenly felt dizzy at seeing my own blood. Collapsing to my knees, fell down to lay on my right side. My vision blurred so I could only see the faint figure of Hector being beat up. Attack! A new voice that sounded young yelled. I thought I saw four new green shapes, but I couldn't tell. 
Only hearing the clanking of metal and steel, I groaned in pain. <laughs> Help! Silence. There wasn't a sound in the alleyway that had just been full of noise. I could still feel the presence of four figures though. Hector was gone with the Bradford guy. I knew that for sure. Mike is POV! So we're back with fucking Mike. He's fucking cried into his pillow and now we're back with him. Mike, hope you don't I hope you're not gonna fuck this one up, man. She's hurt badly, Leo. Donnie was looking over the bloody chested girl. Can we take her back with us? I asked. No, absolutely not. Leo shook his head. We can't risk it. It's our fault she's hurt, and we can't just let her die. Raph commented. Fine. But Splinter is going to kick my shell for this. Leo said, I'll carry her. Raph walked towards the girl. Raph used his strong and muscular arms to gently pick up the unconscious girl, bridal style. Her body was limp, so her head dipped over Raph's arm. Her left arm hung off of her, but the right was lay laying limply on her flat stomach. Moving his arm, Raph supported her neck more, leading the way down into the sewers. I watched Donnie gently feel the girl's forehead. Shaking his head, he mumbled something to himself that I couldn't hear. Take her into my lab, Donnie led Raph away. What the fuck are these turtles doing? They just fucking grabbed this unconscious girl and just fucking feeling her up, putting, putting their fucking fingers in her hair and fucking feeling. Taking her to lab, whatever that means, in quotations, take her to the lab. Fucking, you know, Don and Ralph are nodding at each other. They know what they're talking about, but no one else really knows. They were just some dodgy shit. I stood watching them from next to Leo. Seeing the gleam in my eyes, Leo turned and put his hand on the his youngest his young seeing the gleam in my eyes, Leo turned and put his hand on his younger brother's shoulder. Talking in a low voice, Leo said, Don't tell Sensei yet, please. Why? I pouted. Glancing back at Donnie and Raph, he spoke lower, because she may not stay for long. What? I widened my blue eyes. But she just got here. Do you want to endanger our home? Leo demanded. What if this is all shredder and she has a tracker on her? He could come and kill us all then. Also, this is a random fucking girl. She probably wants to go. We, we don't know who this is. She might want to go home, man. She might want to leave. Mike, what? You want to fucking kidnap this woman? Are you serious? I looked down but didn't reply. Turning around, Leo walked to his room. Before he went inside, he looked at me with a serious expression. Then he shut the door behind him. Mikey! Donnie called. I need your help! Walking into Donnie's lab, I saw Raph holding the girl's good shoulder down. What's up? I asked. You have to hold her legs down. Raph smirked. Okay. I slowly went and pressed down on the girl's shins. What exactly are you doing, Ronnie? Donnie. I mean, who the fuck is Ronnie? Who the fuck is Ronnie? Also, yeah. Fucking Don and fucking Ralph. They're up to some shit. I don't know what they're doing. They're gonna fucking, I don't know, sell her organs on the deep web or some shit. I don't fucking know, man. Donatella and Raphael are the scariest MFers in the fucking game. I'm going to pull out the throwing star. And when I do, she is going to become conscious and freak. You two are to hold down until I can give her this shot. He held up a needle. It'll put her right to sleep for a day or so. Okay. I pressed down harder when Donnie came close to the throwing star in the girl's shoulder. Ready? Donnie asked, and Ralph and I nodded. Pulling the blood-strained throwing star out of the girl's shoulder, Donnie quickly got out the shot. Before he could inject it, the girl broke through Raph and I's grip and jumped off the table. Fucking hell, she's stronger than fucking both of us. She's stronger than all the ninja, ninja Turtles combined. She ran to the corner of the lab and then leaned against the wall, panting. It's okay, girl. Donnie walked a step closer and she flinched back. We won't hurt you. You're a freaking giant turtle, the girl screamed. But we won't hurt you. Donnie stepped forwards again. Get away from me, the girl yelled again. Kyrie's POV. Get away from me. I screamed again, running past the purple masked turtle. I made it to the entrance of this lab thing I was already in. Turning around, I saw that the red and orange masked turtles had walked closer. I didn't realise there were stairs behind me, and I went to step back. Oomph! I felt arms catch me. Looking up, and to the right slightly, I saw a blue masked turtle staring down at me, with narrowed blue eyes. I swear he was blushing too. The thing that caught my attention was that I felt butterflies in my stomach and I felt a sparkle flash in my eyes. His eyes sparkled also, and he smiled sheepishly. <laughs> he pulled me back up. There are stairs there. Coughing. The red masked turtle coughed. Love birds. Shut up, the blue masked turtle snapped, and walked past me to stand next to his brothers. What is going on? She's seen a turtle for the first time. She's teen seen, like, big, scary, t like, fucking turtle creatures, and he's like, fucking, oh my god. But then she fucking gets attracted to one of them very quickly and then it's like oh they're in love <laughs> what's your name the purple masked turtle asked me gently K -k Kyrie I stuttered nice to meet nice to meet you Kyrie he said I'm Donatello but you can call me Donnie or Don they call me the Don they call me Big Don 
because I'm the don, I'm the fucking, you know, I'm the one that people have to, I'm the leader, one you have to answer to. I returned his smile that had a gap in his teeth, except I didn't have the gap, he did. The red masked turtle spoke up next, Raphael, but call me Raf. Okay, so I've been, I'm, I'm the idiot, so I thought it was, I thought they misspelled it and it's supposed to say Ralph, but no, it's Raf. For, for Raphael. So I'm stupid. I thought it was a spelling mistake this whole time, but no. His green eyes stared into mine with a hatred. Great. One of my heroes seemed to already hate me. One of my heroes? What? Wait, I thought you didn't know who they were. Ooh, and he hates you? I thought he's... What? What's going on? Raph, Raphael, what the fuck? What? I didn't do I didn't do anything, man. It's nice to meet you, K -K Kyrie. I'm Michelangelo. The orange one actually walked up to me and grabbed my hand. He shook it wildly and I could tell he was the youngest out of all of us. But call me Mikey, laughing from how he said my name. I couldn't help but smile. How old are you? Raph asked. Seventeen. Why? I raised my eyebrows. Hmm. hmm. Why is that, Raphael? Hmm. What's, go what's going on here? What Why are you asking me this question? This, this weird question. What a weird question to ask, Raphael. Just making sure we weren't dealing with an actual child here. Raph made me smile even more. It seems as if you're all pretty childish anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing my stomach, I blushed at the noise it made. Mikey, Raph and Donnie all looked at each other with a huge grin on their faces. <laughs> Did you fucking hear that? That was fucking... <laughs> Did you hear that noise? Uh, it came from her stomach. Is that me or is it my stomach, guys? <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, I mean, let's go eat some fucking pizza because, yeah, yeah. It's like that fucking scene from Monster House where the fucking uh, the, the two cops get into the car and the fucking guys look at that house and like, you hear that? Like, yeah, yeah that's my, my stomach. stomach. I'm starving. No, 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 no. That it sounds like a like the dangerous, dangerous creature. creature. I'm gonna go check, check it out. out. Fucking gets out of the car and just fucking action moves. The blue masked turtle was only staring at me. He seemed to be in a daze. You hungry? Raph asked. Mm-hmm. I nodded. Pizza! Mikey jumped up and yelled. Yes! Yes! Pizza! Sounds good, I smiled. Mikey and Raph walked past me well. Mike walked past me well, what? Mikey hopped more than walked and Donnie started cleaning cleaning up. The blue masked turtle continued to stare blankly, blankly at me. Before I could say anything, he shook his head and then walked out the door. Leo, what the fuck's wrong with you? Stop fucking looking at me like all weird and shit. Who's that? I walked up on the opposite side of Donnie by his desk and he started patching up my shoulder. Who? Leo? He turned and watched Leo go into another room. Yeah, I nodded. The team leader. His full name's Leonardo. I noticed he was staring at you. Donnie was tightening the bandage. Do you have any idea about what that was about? I questioned. Nope. Donnie shook his head and finished the bandage. Kyrie! Mikey and Raph called. Gotta go, I muttered and then ran out of the room. Looking around me, I saw a couch and a TV to the left of me. Straight ahead team seemed to be the rooms of the turtles. So next to that, was another bigger room. Past the TV was a kitchen with Raph and Mikey. The entrance to the turtle's home was to the far right of me. I eyed it for a few seconds, but then shook the thought away. I was safe from Hector here. Cheese, pepperoni, or the everything pizza. Mikey opened two boxes of fresh smelling pizza. Mmm, I could already taste the pizza on my tongue. Cheese. Wow, we're fucking obsessed. I'm obsessed with pizza. I, I can't just, I can't think of anything else but pizza. I'm just so obsessed with pizza. I, that's all I eat. All I eat is pizza and I drink fizzy drinks. All I drink is pizza and fizzy drinks. Raph smiled and then slid a plate towards me. Picking up the warm slice of pizza, I took a bite from it. The yummy flavour made my taste buds go crazy for more. I finished the whole piece in three bites. Leo, Don, Raph yelled and I cringed at his loud, echoing voice. Come in here and eat this before it's gone, between Mikey and Kyrie. Both of the turtles came bolting out of two different rooms, each took a piece of each kind, and started gulping it all down. I eyed Leo gently, and when he glanced at me, I looked away. We all sat eating like pigs, fucking disgusting. They're fucking, they're fucking eating like animals, man, fucking making a fucking state of the place. Jesus Christ. Bwah. Mikey leaned back. Mikey, Donnie scolded. Not in front of... Burping loudly, I interrupted Donny. Smirking, I raised an eyebrow. Me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> Burp. <laughs> Burp. <laughs> Burp. <laughs> wow, Raph commented. I've never heard a girl burp before. That's because you've never talked to one. Raph, you're a fucking incel. You've never fucking even seen a woman. You've never talked to one woman. Leo made us all laugh, except for Raph. He had a red face and was clenching his fists. I'm finished with dinner. 
Raph yelled and stormed off into his bedroom. Do you guys have to be so mean? Donnie murmured. It's a sibling thing, I suddenly blurted out, putting my hand over my mouth. I felt my gaze sudden. I had lost my older brother two years ago. It still hurt to talk about siblings, especially him. I make a fucking light out of the joke. <laughs> it's a sibling thing, and I'm like, <gasps> My dead brother. <laughs> I'm going to watch my show. Mikey mumbled. Lab time. Donny awkwardly left with Mikey. Leo was staring at me from across the table. Before I could take any more of the staring, I finally said, What's your problem? Jesus Christ. Leo, you're a fucking creepy weirdo. Can you stop? Come on. Leon motioned for me to follow him. It's time for you to meet Master Splinter. Why? <laughs> what did I do? All I did was eat all your fucking food. What does that make me worthy of talking to Master Splinter? H who? I asked as Leo dragged me along with him. We went into the room that Leo had first gone in. There was a tree in the corner of the room, and I wondered how a freaking tree had gotten this far down in the sewers. Looking around, I saw there were a few weapons placed on the wall and a single shelf with a picture on it. A curtain blocked the room of what seemed to be Master Splinter's room. Wait here, Leo released me. Continuing to look around, it wasn't long until Leo came back with someone else. Leo came and stood next to me, before introducing this figure to me. Kyrie, this is Master Splinter. I jumped into Leo's arm when I saw what Splinter was. It's a big giant rat. Ah, I'm a girl and I'm scared of rats. Ah, Leo, ah, protect me. Ta-da. The first chapter is finished. I hoped you liked it because I had to think hard about how I was going to start this story. Smiley face. Don't forget to comment, vote, and follow. And that's the end of that chapter. And that's all I'm going to read because I fucking can't be bothered. My phone is on 4%. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the video. So Kairi is going to be living with the Ninja Turtles forever. She's the new Ninja Turtle. She is going to morph into a Ninja Turtle. And Michelangelo fucking sucks. Everyone hates, everyone hates Michelangelo. Fuck him, uh, fuck Raph, fuck all the Ninja Turtles, just fuck them all, I hate them. I hate, I've always hated the Ninja Turtles, I've never liked them. So anyway, that's it for this video, uh, that's the end of the video, um, and that's the end of the video. That's the end of the video, and it's the end of the video. And, uh, also, I just want to let you know, the video is ended. The video is going to end. It is ending right now. The video will end. In three, two, one, the video is ending. The video is now ended. So see you later, kids. See you next Saturday for another episode of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Bye-bye.